So you may have heard that Elon Musk wants to implant a tiny computer into your skull. Elon's brain computer interface company Neuralink will be conducting the first ever human trial of their implant technology this year. And that is just the beginning. Neuralink plans to move quickly in expanding their business to implanting hundreds, thousands, and eventually millions of brains every year. And in order to achieve that, the company will need to scale the manufacturing of their N1 implant device to levels that are totally unprecedented in the brain computer interface and neuroscience industry. 10 years ago, skeptics would have told you that it was impossible for Tesla to build a million electric cars in a year, but in 2022, they did just that and more. Using the same manufacturing principles learned at Tesla, Neuralink can grow to the same unbelievable scale. And here is how they are doing it. During Neuralink's show and tell live event in late 2022, the company revealed that they had moved the bulk of their operations from California to Austin, Texas, where they had constructed a new facility dedicated to device manufacturing. The main goal of this factory being to rapidly accelerate their implant product and its supporting systems from the prototype phase to volume production we learned that Neuralink has already taken major steps to vertically integrate the manufacturing process for their BCI technology, which means that instead of using commercially available parts and components, the company is developing their own specialized in-house process for manufacturing critical elements of the implant procedure down to the tiny electrode wires and the needles that insert them into the brain tissue. Vertical integration is a foundational manufacturing principle that Tesla has relied on since the introduction of their Model 3 in 2017. Instead of sourcing generic components from some factory in Asia, the company chose to make as many of the parts for the car themselves as possible. So everything from the battery cells and modules to the electric motors to the seats and window glass is made by Tesla. The company even writes all of their own software. There's no Apple CarPlay in a Tesla. They have their own unique operating system. The benefit of this vertical manufacturing is that it allows for rapid iteration and testing. So if a component isn't performing as desired, you can instantly change the design, test it, and change again until the component is doing exactly what you want it to do. That's not something that is really possible when you're locked into a contract with a supplier or buying off-the-shelf commercial products. Which is why at Neuralink's factory, you'll find their design engineers working on the physical manufacturing line to build and debug the products in real time, making for a very fast reiteration cycle time where the implant design can be changed completely in just a matter of days. And all of this work is done in a highly controlled clean room environment. Not only are they working with very sensitive electronics, but these are also medical devices. Even at these early stages, the implants need to be safe for live animal testing and up to standards for human trials within six months or so. It's a manufacturing environment that would be very similar to a semiconductor factory often referred to as a fab with highly controlled particle counts, humidity, and vibration. One of the really interesting features that Neuralink incorporates into their manufacturing process is what they call benchtop testing. So as soon as they finish building the N1 implant device, they immediately put it into a testing rig on the production line. There are a couple of reasons that they do this. Obviously, they want to verify that the product they just made turns on, functions, charges up, and communicates the way it's supposed to. And if anything doesn't check out, then they can instantly feed that testing information back into the design process. And this is all happening on the production line. Another reason that Neuralink invests so much into their product testing is safety. This is at the core of everything that they do. Nothing ever goes into a live animal subject without first being put through a rigorous benchtop testing process. Neuralink wants any animal test to be a confirmatory exercise, never an exploratory one. Neuralink has been perfecting their own artificial brain proxy that they use to test the implant procedure. 
They started off using just a flat sheet of agar, which is like jello pretty much, and they've now upgraded to a composite hydrogel brain proxy that they use to test the thread insertion robot. And the company furthers that by also running their devices through accelerated lifetime testing, which is a longevity test that puts the device into a simulated brain environment that mimics the chemistry of brain tissue and bodily fluids, and then runs it through a hostile environment with elevated temperature and aggressive movement. By putting the implant device into this rig, they can get a minimum four times acceleration factor, so one month in the test rig would be the equivalent of at least four months in a live subject. And this way, they can stress test a device before it gets implanted. What they are looking for primarily is moisture entering the device. Designers are constantly monitoring the internal humidity of the implant. There will be a rise over time, but it should be very small and gradual. They also want to see how the battery and the systems are holding up over time. The company has cabinets full of high density testing racks with thousands of devices going through various stages of accelerated life testing. They want to find the most low frequency edge case failures and ensure that those don't happen inside a human subject. The goal is that a Neuralink implant should comfortably last for at least 20 years inside a person's skull. One of the processes that Neuralink talked about specifically was the microfabrication of their electrode wires. These are the probes that are inserted directly into the brain tissue of the cerebral cortex. Right now, the N1 device is attached with 64 individual wires each one carrying 16 electrodes for a total of 1,024 channels of communication between the implant device and the brain. Neuralink says that they use a thin film microfabrication process to create these wires. They didn't elaborate specifically on what that involves, but we can get an idea of the production methods from a paper titled Thin Film Microfabrication and Intraoperative Testing of Depth Arrays for Sense and Stimulation published by Kristen K. Sellers in 2021 in the Journal of Neural Engineering. In this article, they talk about a few different electrode arrays for recording and stimulation of brain activity, including BCI control. We can see that FDA-approved commercial off-the-shelf electrode arrays will typically have an electrode diameter of between 2 and 4 centimeters, while other Preclinical research and non-FDA cleared designs are getting that down to as little as 0.2 millimeters in size, which is the same ballpark with Neuralink's proprietary wire design that is even slimmer than a human hair. The paper describes these tiny electrodes as being made from a platinum iridium metal core and coated with a thin film of biocompatible non-reactive polymer. Instead of trying to fabricate each individual wire, what they do is start with a silicon wafer, just like a semiconductor, and then they layer on these thin films of the polymer insulator and the platinum electrode. These films are on the scale of micrometers, just a few millionth of a millimeter in thickness. And then the layered films are shaped using a photolithographic process, which is like a combination of lasers and chemical solvents to remove the material around the individual wires. After they've cured, the flexible wires can be just peeled straight from the silicon backing before being stuck into the subject's brain by the Neuralink robot. And just like with microchips, they can fabricate multiple wire arrays at one time on a single wafer of silicon. Since they first began the microfabrication process in 2021, Neuralink has already reduced their production cycle time for the electrode threads down to one third of where it started, allowing them to iterate to a new design in just a matter of days. Continuing on the theme of vertical integration, Neuralink also has their own process for manufacturing the needles that insert the electrodes into the cortex. For this, they use laser milling, which is kind of like a CNC mill, but with sub-micron precision. The needles that the Neuralink robot uses to puncture the brain tissue are made from a tungsten wire that is just 40 microns across. And the specific design of that needle tip is very important because it needs to carry the wire into the cortex and then release it perfectly before the needle quickly retracts like a sewing machine. The needle tip is a design that Neuralink has experimented with thoroughly over the past two years, and their in-house laser mill process 
allows them to iterate a new design in under one hour, milling one needle in just six minutes with a 91% success rate. Neuralink has also integrated a double operating room into their first production facility. And from the videos we were shown, they have already set up human-sized and shaped operating tables in those rooms. So not only are they designing, manufacturing, and testing these devices all under one roof, they'll be conducting brain surgery on human patients and working with those first Neuralink recipients right here in the Neuro Factory. And that feeds back into our two main themes here, vertical integration and rapid iteration. If anything doesn't go as expected or doesn't function to an optimal level, then they can immediately go into the production line and make the exact changes necessary in real time. So the three key fundamentals at Neuralink are safety, scalability, and access to the brain. Safety is the primary focus right now, making sure that the device and the installation process are as safe as possible. Once safety is confirmed in human trials, then scalability becomes the next primary focus because if this device is proven safe, then a lot of people are going to want it. And that means they need to be able to provide a high volume of product at an affordable price. This requires a highly efficient manufacturing process. The reason that Neuralink is putting all of this work into that production line right now before they've done even a single human trial is because they want to move from the safety verification stage to the volume production phase as quickly as possible. So they are running both of these operations in parallel, designing and testing their prototype at the same time as they are perfecting their manufacturing process. So while the development stage of this product is going to seem like it's taking a very long time, and it will, this is a novel medical device. It needs very thorough testing and verification. Once the time comes that the FDA approves Neuralink for general use, the company is literally just going to flip a switch and flood the market with their product, going from hundreds to thousands to millions of users. And that's going to happen really fast once it gets rolling. I think that if everything really does go according to Elon's plan, the world is going to be shocked by just how quickly these brain implants become commonplace. Let us know your thoughts on Neuralink. Are you excited to see this technology hit mass production or still scared of Elon Musk putting stuff in your brain? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.